I don't know how I'm going to hold these up for the thumbnail. I think I've actually managed this. I'm going to get cocky and try and shove the owl on top. And my arms are shaking. Hi everyone and welcome to this utterly ridiculous book haul. I haven't actually filmed and uploaded a book haul since last summer, early to midsummer at that. Like I think I filmed it in the July and uploaded it in the August. So this is all of the books that I've acquired, I think anyway, since August of last year. Well, since July of last year, because this counts all of August too. It's a lot. It's over 80 books. You're probably going to want a cup of tea and or some snacks. And yeah, I'm going to start off with the physical books. I will then move on to the Kindle books. I will then move on to the NetGalley arcs. And I'll then move on to audiobooks. So quite a few sections. Oh, and before we get properly stuck in, I just want to quickly introduce you to this gorgeous owl, which my friends got me for my birthday. Was it my birthday? Yeah my birthday and he now lives on my bookshelves and it's just so cute so yeah the physical books this is a combination of books I've bought myself and books that people have bought me and in no particular order they're just from how I was able to take the thumbnail kind of size wise so first we have the kiss quotient by Helen Huang and I have already read this, so I'm so impressed with myself. Aoife sent me this for my birthday, so thank you so much to Aoife over at Fred Weasley Died Laughing. This will feature in my January reading wrap-up, but I was late to the party on this one. I know that this is a book that people were talking about a lot a year or two ago. I loved this. It's a really sweet, slightly hot, steamy adult contemporary romance that features an autistic woman around the age of 30 so it's not something you come across on a regular basis and it makes for a very fun heartwarming steamy read <laughs> next we have another book that i got from Aoife and that is with the fire on high by elizabeth acevedo i don't know an awful lot about this one i remember seeing kayla over at books and la la read this last year all I've really taken away from it is that there's cooking and recipes in this and that it's a YA contemporary. I don't remember much more, but I will definitely be picking this up soon. This is also from Aoife. This is Girl in the Rearview Mirror by Kelsey Ray Dimberg. Neither of us really knew what this one was about. She kind of just read the description, was like looking through Book Depository, read the description, was like, oh yes, that sounds like something Kelsey would like. So, I don't know an awful lot about this one. I haven't got much of a clue, but it is again one I'm going to be rushing to get to because if anything is the goal this year, it is to try and read books as I get them rather than having them for years on end. Next is a book I treated myself to, and that is The Institute by Stephen King. I am starting to really love Stephen King's writing. So when I saw this in Tesco on a hardback deal, I decided to grab it for myself. I don't really know what it's about, but I'm at the point where Stephen King, regardless of whether he is becoming an actual favourite author of mine, is definitely on my auto-buy list at this point. Next, we have The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. I read and reviewed this last year, along with rereading The Handmaid's Tale. So if you want to see my in-depth thoughts, check out the video that I will link in the cards and also the description down below. But yeah, this is the follow-on to The Handmaid's Tale and was definitely up there with it for me. I loved this book. Next, we have another book that I got in that same Tesco deal as the Stephen King book, and I treated myself to Christmas Shopaholic by Sophie Kinsella. This is not the first Sophie Kinsella book that will be featured in this book haul, as you'll see later on, but this is the most recent one, and I'm at the point where Sophie Kinsella is one of my favourite authors, along with being an auto buy author and so to be able to get a hardback of hers quite cheaply I was like yes. While I was in London last year I treated myself to one book from Foils because it's not the cheapest of bookshops but this felt worth it and this is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I have actually started reading this look how good I'm being this year. I am on page 44 so I've not made much progress but all the same I have started it. This follows a story within a 
story at times from what I've gathered so far. It's quite weird. It's quite a whimsical, bizarre fantasy. So the first few chapters follow various different weird short stories. There's like a pirate, there's a girl. It's all a bit bizarre. And I was there reading it going, I have not got a clue what's going on. And then all of a sudden it all started making sense. So yeah, this is an interesting and utterly stunningly beautiful read. And it's also a signed edition. So keep your eyes open for my thoughts on this one in my January reading wrap up. For my birthday, Luke got me Ready, Set, Novel, which is a writer's workbook. I've been saying for years, and I'm saying maybe 20 years or more, that I wanted to write a book. And Luke keeps going, why aren't you writing? Why aren't you writing? So he's bought me this to work through. It's a workbook that's got like loads of different activities and pages and things to help you kind of get started in sorting out and getting motivated and organising a novel. I will be working through that this year. I'm going to get on with it this year. He also, for my birthday, got me this awfully heavy book, which is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, illustrated edition. I've not yet reread this version, but I have had a flick through. And at first, I was agreeing with everyone in that there's a lot less illustrations because there are so many empty pages of text. But actually, I think it's got a lot in it still, possibly as much as ever. And it's just... Because it's such a long book, you get so many more blank pages. It's a stunning book, just like the others, and I can't wait to actually give it a reread and properly look at those illustrations. Oh, that was heavy. So now on to the Kindle books. And as I mentioned earlier, Sophie Kinsella is playing a big part in this book haul. So I treated myself to some Sophie Kinsella books for recovering of the of the shopaholic books I believe and they were all quite cheap and I own a lot of them already in physical format but I don't own many on Kindle but then I own some of the later ones on Kindle but not in physical format so I'm just mid trying to complete my collection both sides of that spectrum. So I bought The Secret Dream World of a Shopaholic, Shopaholic Abroad, Shopaholic Ties the Knot, shopaholic and sister and shopaholic and baby and then I realized that I don't actually own shopaholic to the rescue either so that is the first ones are books one to five and then I also picked up book eight and then obviously the one I hauled earlier the physical copy is book number nine I think so yeah I've only read up to about book six I think so I need to kind of revisit that series I think I also bought The Man Who Didn't Call by Rosie Walsh. I don't remember why I read, why I read, why I bought this at all. Maybe it was on a deal, maybe someone recommended it. I don't remember anymore because I bought it in September. I also bought Date Night by Samantha Hayes. I don't know what this is, except that it's a psychological thriller. I also bought Cop Town by Karen Slaughter. I've not read any Karen Slaughter yet, but I want to, and I've just been kind of acquiring her novels here and there because I'll probably like her stuff. Bit of a risk, but 99p ago I've been paying for these books, so. Then we have Come Back For Me by Heidi Perks. This seems to be another psychological thriller. A Vintage Summer by Kathy Bramley. I think I was just going on some sort of buying binge, you know, because this is still the 1st of September that I've also bought this. I don't know anything about this. Another psychological thriller here is The Guilty Mother by, Anne, by Diane Jeffrey. I also bought The Little B&B at Cove End by Linda Mitchellmore. I don't know anything about this. It looks cute though. I, for free, as part of, I think it was Kindle First, picked up Quantum, which is a thriller and is the first book in a Captain Chase book series by Patricia Cornwell. I own a couple of Patricia Cornwell books, but I've not read any of them yet. That's a lie. I've read one. It was her non-fiction one about who she thinks Jack the Ripper is. That's the only book of hers I've read, though. I also picked up The Man Who Played With Fire. What is this? So Steve Larson, who is the author of The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, died quite suddenly when he was mid-working through that series. 
and hadn't published any of it from what I remember. But he'd been working on some other book apparently and someone collects pieces of his true crime puzzle to follow a trail of intrigue, espionage and conspiracy. That's all I know but this looks interesting. Next we have Deep Fear by Rachel Lynch. Yes, this is from the same series as a book that I read last year. I think I read the fourth book last year, Bitter Edge. Yeah, I think that's the one I picked up. And so I wanted to pick up the previous books and work my way through them, which is something I'm still aiming to do. Then we have The Guy Who Tried... Tried? Nope. The Guy Who Died Twice by Lisa Gardner. I've read one Lisa Gardner book, but I can't remember what it was now. I'm feeling stupid and forgetful. Next we have Pretending to Dance by Diane Chamberlain. This is an author whose books I just pick up when I see them on the cheap because I've read one of her books in the past and enjoyed it and I've never got round to reading any more but here's to hoping I like the rest of them when I get to them. Then we have Bear Town by Frederick Backman. This is uh, quite a popular well-known author at this point and I've still not read any of his stuff despite picking them up whenever I see them cheaply so I want to get to something by this author this year hopefully. Next we have Fractured which is the second Will Trent book and again this is by Karen Slaughter so same explanation as earlier just acquiring her stuff. Then we have The Accidental Further Adventures of the Hundred Year Old Man by Jonas Jonasson. I do own the first book in this series. I think it's something about the story of the 100 year old man that jumped out of a window. Have I made that up? The Hundred Year Old Man Who Climbed Out the Window and Disappeared. I think that's the first book in the series but I've not read that yet either. Speaking of books and series, I picked up Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I also bought Underlying by Janelle Harris and I'm losing my voice. I'm terribly sorry. I'm just going to have to croak my way through the rest of this video. I also bought The Raven Master by Christopher Scaife. This is a guy who works at the Tower of London that is in charge of looking after the ravens. And I'm so eager to read this. Not just because I've always been intrigued by the Tower of London and the Ravens, but the last time we went, the Ravens were being mischievous little buggers. And I want to know more about them. Like, I really want to know more about the personalities and what it must be like to be living in the Tower while being in charge of these birds. And I think this is going to be a fantastic read. I also bought Doctor Sleep, which is... Bleh which is the second book in the Shining series or duology by Stephen King. As I said earlier, I want to start picking up a lot more Stephen King, so just acquiring his books whenever I see the chance. Another author I want to start reading a lot more by is Terry Pratchett. So I've started collecting the Discworld books. So I've managed to get hold of Equal Rights, which is the third Discworld novel. And I think there's another one later in the haul too. I also bought Codename Villanelle by Luke Jennings. I really enjoyed the TV show Killing Eve and so I wanted to check out the books. Ages ago I listened to the fifth season on audiobook by N.K. Jemison. I really enjoyed it but I felt like it wasn't one that I was getting the most out of by audiobook so I wanted to check out the book again in a physical or kindle copy and I've picked up the kindle copy for 99p here I was like I may as well get it it gives me the chance to reread it in a format that I think I'll be able to take the story in better. I also picked up The Black Prism which is the first book in the Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks and I also got The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms, which is the first book in the Inheritance Trilogy, also by N.K. Jemison. I then, as part of a reading challenge for my TBR game thing that sat over there watching me evilly, um, picked up a book on Amazon Prime for free as part of the Prime Reading Library, and that is Sweet Pea by C.J. Scoofs. I also have, yes, another Terry Pratchett as I thought, Hogfather, because this was 99p, I think it was 99p or 1.99 during Christmas, so I picked it up while I could. This is the 20th book in the Discworld series. And now onto the NetGalley portion of this haul. So these are all books in this part that I received from the publishers for free via NetGalley. 
um, that I'll be hoping to do reviews for. <laughs> I'm really hoping to be better with this this year. So we have Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky, The Confession by Jesse Burton, The Fallout by Rebecca Thornton, The Huntress by Kate Quinn, The Killer Inside by Cass Green, Long Bright River by Liz Moore, Saving Buddy by Nicola Oust, Oust, I'm not sure, Through the Wall by Caroline Kakoran, Seven Days by Alex Lake, I Will Make You Pay by Teresa Driscoll, The Women at Hitler's Table by Rosella Posterino, The Black Hawks by David Ragg, the Understudy by Sophie Hannah, Claire McIntosh, B.A. Paris and Holly Brown. The Lady of the Ravens by Joanna Hickson. The God Game by Danny Toby. The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. This is the author of Station Eleven, which I have read and really enjoyed. So Francis Bryan, which was Henry VIII's most... No, bleh, bleh, why can't I talk? Most Notorious Ambassador by Sarah Beth Watkins. High Heels and Beetle Crushers by Jackie Skingley. The Guest List by Lucy Foley. The Night Country, which is the second book in the Hazelwood series by Melissa Albert. Foul is Fair by Hannah Capin. My Lies, Your Lies by Susan Lewis. The Silence by Susan Allott. Are You Watching by Vincent Ralph. Remain Silent by Susie Stainer. Saving Missy by Beth Mori. The Murder House by Michael Wood. Keep Him Close by Emily Cock, The Clergyman's Wife by Molly Greeley, Our Little Cruelties by Liz Nugent, who is the author of... I can't think. I read a book by this author a year or two ago and absolutely adored it. The Dilemma by B.A. Paris, which I have already read and reviewed, so I'll leave that linked in the cards and the description down below in case you want to check that out, but I love this author so much. The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis, which I have also recently read and will appear in my January wrap-up. And finally, on to audiobooks. So these are all books that I picked up on Audible since August, and I've already read some of these too. So the first one is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This is a really cute contemporary, which I've already read. We have My Sister the Serial Killer by Oing... Oh, oh dear. Oh, Ying Can Braithwaite. The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. This is another one that I've already read. The Secret Barrister by The Secret Barrister, narrated by Jack Hawkins. I've already read this one as well. Pet Cemetery by Stephen King, narrated by Michael C. Hall. I have finished this one a while ago and loved it. The Couple Next Door by Shari Lepena. Read this one as well. The Last Wish by Andre Sapalski and I've read this one. The Beatrix Potter Collection. I just thought this would be really cute to own. I've not got around to listening to it yet though. And that is the lot. So, of all those audiobooks, I've actually already read and listened to most of them. I'm really impressed with myself there. This haul was massive, so sorry that I didn't go into many details on a lot of these books, but we would have been here far too long if I had. I'm going to go back to doing monthly hauls, and I'm not buying or requesting too many books this year, so hopefully nothing this big will be coming out for me for a long time after this. But thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what books you picked up last year, whether you've read any of these, if there's any you'd like to recommend to me so that I can use them in the evil game and try and prioritise them, feel free to too. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe by clicking the image of me if you want to see more book views and other bookish content from me. And I will see you soon. Bye bye.